Hello and welcome to my channel. This is your friend Ranjit and today I would like to talk about a very sensitive and a very serious issue which I have been noticing for so many years inside the biker community. Friends, recently I had in my native town gone to a family who lost his son just last week. Friends, I fail to understand that there's so many facilities, so much of information available all across the Google, in the social media, even the government enforcing so many rules and regulations, but still our bikers are not taking it very seriously. The issue which I am going to raise is about wearing a helmet and a riding gear. Friends, I have been driving motorcycle for the past 30-35 years now. And uh, the time when we, I started uh, riding, we uh, the helmet was supposed to be a uh, luxury. Luxury in the sense that at that time, the premium helmet, which I can remember at that time, which we were uh, knowing about was studs uh, and uh, studs helmets, the premium version, one, uh, two models which I remember is one is RB2 and the other one was steel uh, professional. So these helmets were uh, coming for a price of 700 and 780 rupees is uh, what I remember, which was supposed to be a slightly premium. But we also had the lower versions of it, which was available below, say, 500 rupees and all. But at that time, the vehicles which we were driving was the Rasdud or maybe a Hero Honda. When RX100 came, yes, then Vegas, Vega helmets came. But then the the real test of this, those helmets were not really tested purely uh, in the in the sense uh, from the bikers because uh, we were not doing very high speeds. The maximum which you could do is 100. 110 is the maximum, even the RX100, until it's modified, it might have not gone beyond say 120 or something like that. Although you also had this uh, RD30 at that time, but very few people had it. But wearing a helmet was a big taboo. Uh, there also people used to complain that you will have hair loss. The, uh, and then the other thing is that Indian climate is quite hot and humid. Uh, so wearing a helmet is a very cumbersome uh, thing. But now you have got balaclavas which was not there early, people used to tie uh, handkerchiefs on the head and we were going along. But you've got balaclava, so many you know headgears are available which can be very flexible, you can wear it and it kind of cools down your uh, you know head area and it covers it, you don't have a problem. But still I find people not taking it seriously. Riding gears, okay, the second part of the riding gear is the riding jacket, riding pant, shoes and everything, but then at least the bare, bare minimum if you are traveling locally, say you are commuting only say five, uh, within 5 kilometer radius, not essentially on the real highway but on the state highways, at least even the town you are moving out, you should be wearing a good helmet. Friends, another thing, wearing helmet is also not sufficient. You should always have this tucked in. I have seen people wearing helmet with straps open. Uh, they take uh, wearing helmet as if uh, sheerly because they want to avoid penalty by the cops. But the overall thing what you fail to understand is that if there is a, even on a speed of 40 if you are going and you have a fall, if you hit your head on the way you had it, you never know what kind of injury you are going to get into. And all these head injuries eventually uh, uh, you know, they land up in serious issues. The same thing has happened to my uh, my uh, village uh, friend's son. And uh, you know, when you go to the funeral, you see the uh, mothers uh, crying, the parents, the onlookers. Everybody is so sad about. A youngster who's just lost his life. As I can remember, there's an old dialogue from the film Shole, and I'm just going to uh, translate it in you know, English. 
in which A.K. Hangul says, the biggest burden in this life is when a father carries his son's coffin. I am telling you this because we all grow up, we all have our families, we all have so much of expectations from your uh, kid, your children. You all want the well-being of your children, not only us but others also. We don't want anybody to be harmed. We don't want that sad situation to come to anybody. But then, if you are not responsible enough, if you are not taking care of it, I would also say that uh, the onus is not only on the riders. Now, uh, I, I definitely agree because, uh, you know, even while now driving there, we never, I mean, on a regular basis, we never used to wear helmet. It was not compulsory at that time. But okay, whenever we used to go out of the city for a drive, definitely the helmet was there. We always used to have a jacket also, but not a riding jacket, but a regular, a regular jacket also. To save her from the save us basically from the or a wind or something save her from the the breeze or you know dust what uh, flows on. But we always had that uh, a high ankle shoe uh, if possible to save us from the. Uh, <laughs> So this is, uh, so when we met, sorry there was a phone call so I had to take it. So I, I could relate uh, to this saying that the onus is also on the parents. They have to make it compulsory that if you are buying a bike for your son, make sure that you buy a good helmet and a good riding jacket for him also. What happens is that buying a bike itself, you know the rider, the youngsters buy it, uh, Tested the parents to buy an X uh, motorcycle or a Y motorcycle, and then they're scared enough to ask for more money for the riding jacket. People also see that no, no, you have bought so expensive. I mean, they don't think it as a something which is mandatory uh, for riding. So the onus also goes onto the onto the parents now that if you have a uh, if you are going to buy a motorcycle or a scooter or anything for your kid. You should ensure that you buy a right fit helmet, not the ones you get complementary with the half face helmets, which are you know complementary with the scooters or motorcycles they give you now. Right snug fit, good quality helmet, and a riding jacket. If you think that this you know person has to travel, you should buy and give it to him. Whether he has to use it, see. As long as you get the material with you, obviously you would like to. Just because it's the riding jackets might. Uh, take you back by 5000 plus so people might be slightly you know or you have you know they might not be buying but then i would say that the, the, it's up to the parents to buy it to your children buy it for the children and then tell them because if you're riding it you have to wear this get let them get used to wearing riding gears it all this funda of you know getting uh, heat hot climate and all this drama will go once you are used to it. Now today, if I have to drive down anywhere, I cannot wear, go without a helmet. I am just, I am just so uncomfortable without wearing a helmet. It's been a part of my life. So I, I am very, very particular on this purely because I understand that without helmet, you are risking your life and the lives also of people who are dependent on you. The sorrow, the tragedy, which a family, goes through just because of sheer negligence or sheer, slightly maybe a discomfort which a rider feels while wearing his, his pick. So my friends, I would seriously request all of you to please wear a helmet, please wear a riding gear if you're riding out, drive safe. Now another thing which I've seen is, you know, all these high or how the higher CC vehicles, you know, there's a lot of people who talk about top speed of the vehicle. I've checked it to 150, I've checked it to 170, I've checked it to one. See, uh, checking all this is good. I mean, I, I know, but then please understand that any, any two wheeler beyond the speed of 100 is a major risk. So you have to be very, very careful. And all these riding clubs also should, I mean, most of the riding clubs do ensure that uh, the riders do wear 
helmets and security gears and I appreciate them but then also they should also have a classes for whether the fits are correct I also see a lot of people wearing big time helmet but they're shaking so uh, it should be taken into they should consider that this is meant for your safety second comes the beauty and everything else along with it so that has to be ensured and somebody has to take the onus of uh, doing it completely well you should not depend only on the cops to enforce it. So friends, please avoid driving without helmet. I'm again telling you, losing someone dear is actually very, very, very saddening. It's actually very saddening. I hope you will listen to what I have said. Thanks and keep watching my channel. Thank you. Bye.